It is a nightly feature we are starting called Coronavirus Q&A. Last night we had Dr. Ruth Bergeron, an infectious disease doctor from UT Health San Antonio. Tonight we are pleased to be joined by County Judge Nelson Wolf. And uh, Judge Wolf, right off the top, I want to ask you a question about the fact that we are now up to 25 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the city of San Antonio and Bear County. Your reaction to the fact that that we've jumped like that far? Well, I, I think it's going to continue to go up. The more that you test, and we knew that, the more that you test, the more that you're going to have uh, COVID-19. So I expect those numbers to continue to go up. Uh, you know, it's just a question of um, what are the right steps at the health? You just mentioned, uh, just as you came on, Dr. Ruth uh, Bergman, who we hired today and on a contract. And she stated to me this morning that as long as we have social distances in restaurants, it's not any different than anywhere else. And uh, as they have alternative uh, seating. And so in the order that I put out, I put all those things in there that needed to be done. I'm not sure, you know, where this stops. Um, I mean, I think we'll know a little bit more within the next few days, I guess. Uh, I don't know how much of those other 12 or so were community spread as opposed to being in touch with a traveler that has gone somewhere else. Uh, but, you know, I just don't know how far we're going to have to go on uh, on. Uh, social distances and uh, closing everything down. I mean, we're getting we're getting pretty close to having some severe economic problems. When I see economic problems, that means people don't work and people don't get paid. Uh, you know, just in the restaurant business alone, there's probably thousands of people at work. Yeah. So, you know, it's not an easy choice. You throw somebody out of a job, uh, you know, you know, I don't have all the answers. All I know is I followed the policy of the CDC. I followed the policy of what the uh, public health uh, key people at the city said yesterday. I followed the same thing the mayor said yesterday. But it may have to change. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, I just don't know how far we go in isolating uh, people. Uh, uh, you know, we took a number of steps today to try to help people. We uh, stated that we would uh, not, uh, stop evictions, which we're doing. We're going to stop foreclosures next 30 to 60 days. Uh, we are, are going to appropriate some $5 million to help out some of the smaller businesses that are, you know, right on the throes of going broke. Uh, it's, uh, it's just very tough. I don't think anybody has the exact answer of, of, of what to do. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we were doing things like this is to get some of those, you know, uh, I, in my opinion, facts help with fear in a lot of instances. And, you know, we, the base, the first thing I, I really want to talk about, we talked about the 25, but also what's your basic message to the citizens of Bear County tonight, no, the, right the, where we are? Yeah, the very basic message has been all along is social distances. You got to remember, it's the droplets that come out of a person that may have it and get to you. And you have to be within about six foot of somebody. Just because you walk by somebody doesn't mean you're going to get coronavirus. It's the droplets that come out. And uh, that's the purpose of the testing that's going on now, to find those that do have tests positive, to uh, isolate them, whether it's a self-imposed quarantine or somewhere else, is to, to, to pull them out. And that's the reason for the testing. If you get tested, there's nothing we can do to cure your cure it. We can treat your systems symptoms, right? The pneumonia or some other symptom that you might have, but we can't cure you. So the purpose of testing is to extract those people out. There's two million people in the city, and I would assume we're going to have you know quite a few more of those. And it's just how far we go, and shutting everything down. I, I don't have the answer to that. All I know is that at some point. Uh, you're damaging a lot of lives, and I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the balance is yet, yeah. and and obviously I'll be adjusting my uh, criteria as we come along. And as health professionals say that we need to do something else, I think the governor is going to say some things tomorrow. We'll hear what he has to say, and that may cause a, a, a difference of uh, what we need to do. Uh, it's just not an easy easy thing to decide. Uh, uh, 
we already got it compounded with uh, with the schools closing and you know what what are, what are low income families going to do with their children how are you going to feed them how are you going to take care of them where are you going to do it what are you going to do about your work uh, uh, let me tell you small businesses can't do what the large ones do uh, they survive on a day to day basis and it's uh they don't have a big pile of money that they can keep paying somebody so people lose a job they don't have a place to work uh, it's uh you know it's not easy do you think one the, let's get to the first question that we have tonight from one of our viewers is the question is is there a disconnect between the city and the county response to covid 19. i, I i'm going to reshape that and say is it important that yeah. the city and the county be on the same page yeah, in their I, response to COVID-19. It, it is, but let me tell you, I've been around a long time and I've been through at least three different crises. And to say one thing one day and then the very next day change it, that's just not in my nature till I understand the need to change it. And yeah. understand, like I say, Ruth, who you just had on your show is now advising us on what to do. And I just read you what she said. Uh, so that could change. That could change. Uh, but I don't know where the domino stops. You know, I, I, I don't believe in saying something one day and then uh, all of a sudden flipping and say something the next day. So I get a little bit better or evidence about what we should do here. Let's clarify a little bit. The next question that we have from one of our viewers is what does the county's declaration require of restaurants? Obviously, we know the city is basically saying all restaurants need to close down except for takeout or drive through. What does the yeah. county's declaration require of restaurants in Bear County? Well, we, we're first of all, we're following the CD, CDC recommendations with respect with respect to restaurants. And then we enumerate eight or nine or 10 different uh, elements with respect to that uh, social, the distances, six foot apart, no more than six people at a table, sanitizers when you come in, uh, encouraging people to use takeout and to, and to do the uh, delivery. But again, you know, somebody's touching that food, uh, use delivery, two or three different people are touching that food. So it, 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 it people having to, check make sure that they're cleaning their hands and everything when, when, when they're working nobody coming to work that is sick uh, like I say i was at the east side little small restaurant owned by the rodriguez family and uh they were doing everything right and uh, of course he's he was afraid what was going to happen and it certainly happened today so he's going to be uh shut down yeah what are restaurants required to do, the ones that are still open? Should people be preparing food? Should they wear more protective gear? I mean, is that any of the, the well, protections that you guys have looked at? I think, I think, you know, tell me the difference between the grocery store and the restaurant. Yeah. I walk into the grocery store. First of all, I got a bag and, I mean, a, 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 a cart that I'm going to have to push around. Who, who do I know who touched that? Then there's fresh produce. There's meat everywhere. Uh, you know, and then I go through a checkout count and that's got a counter and then I, you know, it, I'm in contact with a lot of people regarding food when I go to the rest, when I go to the, to the, uh, grocery store, I'm having a hard time finding out the difference between the two. There's several hundred people in the grocery store when I go there and I'm passing a ton of them. I go to this little restaurant, uh, uh you know, it was at the best half full and I was isolated from the uh, rest of the group. So I don't know. I just have a hard time understanding the difference. Uh, another one of our viewer questions. Many neighborhoods open their neighborhood pools around April 1st. Is there any CDC or local health department guidance for something like this? Or are you concerned about the neighborhood pools or are we not even there yet? Well, I haven't heard about the pools yet. I, I haven't, all I know is that what we've done, um, and, and it is in my order also, no gathering any more than 50 people. Uh, and encouraging to do 10 or, 10 or less. Uh, there's exceptions to it when, you know, with you in a building and people are separated, but in a group together. And uh, as far as the water jumping in the water, um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't heard the take on that yet. Uh, I, I know in the news conference that you had this morning, uh, Sheriff Salazar was there. I know the district attorney was there. Uh, right. Like you said, you're working with Dr. Berger and at UT Health San Antonio. Yeah. When we talk about our, I guess, you know, you, you talk about the, the deputies are on the front line, the healthcare workers are on the front line. Are those the people as a county judge that you are 
most concerned about and making sure they have protective gear and that they're taking yeah. the steps they need to take? Yeah, we've taken extraordinary measures at the, at the jail. Uh, we're testing the, the guards as well as the prisoners. Uh, before someone, it, when somebody's arrested, we test them, test them outside before they even come in. Uh, we do have some isolation uh, cells. We do have some climate, uh, climate control or wind uh, air control cells. Uh, we're checking them more often on a, on a regular basis, and then we're checking them again when they leave. So uh, these measures are being put in place, and they're under uh, they're being done today. So we have 3,700 uh, people in that jail. Now, let me tell you, that's a hell of a lot more dangerous than a restaurant. Uh, we have 48 people living together in a in a quadrant, you know. There, some of them are in separate cells, but many of them are together. Uh, so we're trying to take every measure we can uh, to make sure that, uh, that, that 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 we don't have an outbreak in the jail. A final question for you, Judge. What's your message to somebody that is working in the hotel motel industry, working in the restaurant industry, working in the bar industry tonight? What is your message to them well, about the future? I, right now, it's not very bright. Uh, I'm not sure. The bigger companies, they may can sustain paying someone uh, when their business is way, way down. Smaller businesses have a extremely difficult visit. I, I know that because I've built two of them from the ground up. And, and it's very, very difficult. You're, 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 many times you're on a, just living day to day, just like anybody else does. So that's what we put in place this morning to help people as much as we can. $5 million fund to help the small businesses to keep them going okay so they can pay their employees. Uh, not not uh, allowing evictions uh, when people are being rented, renting not foreclosing on homes, uh, not paying fines, all those issues we uh, committed to do today and we'll be taking them up on, uh, I think, next Tuesday. So uh, we're doing everything we can to help people uh, during this crisis and to help the small businesses that, uh, you know, let the federal government give $50 billion to the airline industry. We don't have that kind of money to give away. But we can try to help people as much as we can through the small business and through taking burdens off of them uh, in terms of their taxes and foreclosures and evictions and things like that. County Judge Nelson Wolf, thank you for joining us. You joined us at 630. Thank you for joining us again at 915. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right. Again, 25, the latest number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Bear County. We'll be right back.